Today we're going to take a look at uh, error handling and navigation rules. These ideas are going to be built on what we've done already in terms of learning block four and learning block five. The validators are used to make sure that converted values are in the correct range and that they meet the business rules. Also, converters are used to take our string values that come in from the uh, HTML form on the HTTP request and then are converted into values of the correct data type ready for insertion into the managed bean. And we've seen some ways in which we can generate errors when things don't quite go according to plan with those conversions and validations. And we'll look at some other ways in which that can be done as well. We're familiar with the required attribute. If it's set to true, then the user has to provide a value and also with the required message so that we can provide a user-focused, helpful, meaningful message instead of what might perhaps be not so helpful or meaningful if we leave it to the standard message generation. Something we've not talked about so far is the ID attribute and we'll talk about that a little bit later today. We have an example here of a validator attribute, along with that, a validator message. Again, user-focused, helpful, meaningful, from the viewpoint of the user, not from the developer's viewpoint. A couple of ways of converting. We could either use the converter attribute, or we can use a converter tag. Either way, there needs to be a converter message, so that we don't have some kind of standard and horrible message that will be given to the user expressing not even the developer's viewpoint but some kind of internal view from the framework. Now whether we're converting or validating, two of the parameters that appear in the method parameter lists are faces context and UI component that we'll use in the method when we want to report a problem We'll take that component, convert it to a UI input type, and that means we can then call the setValid method and set that to false. That's a message to the framework to say, don't go any further in the lifecycle. We've got a problem. The control servlet will abort the lifecycle, return to the original view, and we'll then start looking around for messages. So we'll want our own message to appear there, and uh, we can set that up like this, some string, which is then wrapped up inside a new faces message object, and that message is then added to the context. And this is where the client ID comes in, because we're going to make use of the ID that was set in the facelet code. So we we'll might say, for example, ID equals discount. That is the value that will be used when we're creating the message. And that now associates this message with that input text UI component. It might be associated with it in terms of the message, but it won't necessarily appear right next door to that component. It depends on what we do with the messages tag. You can see that the ID is used on the input tag. Then if we want to display a single message, we can make use of the H <coughs> message element and we'll use the for attribute on that element to link it to the input text with which it is going to be associated. So that means now that that message for that UI component with that ID will appear at this point in the facelet, if there is such a message in existence. So it might be that one of the conversions failed, or it might be that several conversions failed. When that is redisplayed as part of the error processing in the lifecycle, when that H message element is due to be displayed, the system will then look for any messages that have got the discount ID associated with that message, and then it will be displayed at this point. On the other hand, we might want to display all the messages at once, in which case we can make use of the H messages element, and we can set a layout attribute to be either list, which will essentially give us a bullet pointed list, or table. Any message that is not linked to a specific UI component via its ID is known as a global message. So we'll set the ID to be null instead of a particular UI component ID. And they will appear in the messages, but they will not be picked up when we try to output a message for a specific ID, because it has no ID. Sometimes we might want to display all the messages, and that will display everything, including 
the global messages and the ones that are targeted to specific UI components. Alternatively, if we've been making use of the H message, singular, at various points through the facelet code, and we've picked out specific messages for specific UI components, then we don't want to repeat those in the block of all messages. What we would do then is to use the H messages element, but with the attribute global only set to true. And that will then filter out all the messages that have associated component IDs and leave the rest that do not have a, a component ID. I can see this working so that you might have a, a form with lots of inputs and you will list the single message for that component right next to the component all the way down the form. And then at the bottom or maybe at the top or wherever else you want to display it, you could have an H messages global only equals true element to output any other messages that are associated with the form but not with specific UI components. One way of generating an error report is to throw an exception. And if you throw a standard exception, such as throwing a new validator exception or a new converter exception, making use of the faces message class, that will cause the message to appear and to be displayed on the error screen. But please remember that if you've set any validator message attribute or any converter message attribute on any of these tags, that message will override anything that comes out of the conversion or validation processing. If you set that converter message attribute, it will always override everything else that comes out. Now you can throw application specific exceptions and there is an example, quite a nice one that you can see online at this URL.